Uh, first off, Top of the Vita provides our uh, team meals on Fridays. They did the steak dinner tonight. I can tell you right now, it is probably not easy to cook over 250 steaks and 25 pieces of chicken. So how about a round of applause for the staff of Top of the Vita? Uh, a couple other thank yous. You know, sometimes these people really <laughs> go unnoticed in their job uh, quite fre uh, frequently. You know, obviously some of our school administrators, they made it tonight. Uh, Mr. Zyers, uh, Mr. Crocker, and uh, Todd Porter. Uh, obviously, Carrie Hecker, our athletic secretary, Mr. DiLoretto, Mr. Mason, uh, Harley Nefster, all from Central <laughs> Office, and that. They do a phenomenal job. Uh, Trish and her team, Dr. Eshball, uh, who's you know kind of new to our team, but is doing a you know phenomenal job. Uh, some of the operations guys, and you know the guys kind of really behind the scenes. It, it really goes a long way. Um, and then there's one more thank you I want to make, uh, and I know a lot of the seniors uh, and really you know some underclassmen have, have started you know to, you know say something to me about this. And uh, I think it's just one of those things that goes a long way for our program. Uh, but if you follow us on social or if you're on YouTube, you know, we've got a guy uh, that's been a real good friend uh, to myself and a few of us for the past few years. Uh, he works at the Hall of Fame. But Jay Gray and Jolly Hall Up Productions does the weekly graphics, the rewinds, the senior graphics this week. Uh, and, and I think he really likes being a part of the action on Friday night. So how about a round of applause for Jay Gray? All right, we'll go ahead and introduce our uh, speaker tonight. Uh, you know, when we started thinking about speakers, uh, really a couple months ago, you know, we put together a list, and uh, you know, this was a guy that really came to mind right away, uh, and really, he understands Star County football at a very high level, and then uh, when we talked on the phone, you know, he understands probably rivalries to the highest level. He played in probably the biggest rivalry game uh, there is. So TJ Downing is a Colonial High School alumni where he played Ohio or where he played for Ohio High School Hall of Famer Jack Rose. In high school he was a first team All Ohioan and played in the North South Ohio All-Star game, as well as in the legendary Big 33 game, which was a, a longtime high school all-star game between uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania and Hershey PA. I'd love to see the game brought back. You don't want to see that game. <laughs> uh, TJ, though, was recruited out of high school by the sweater vest Jim Tressel and played for Ohio State University from 2002 to 2006. TJ was a member of the 2002 National Championship team, the 04 Alamo Bowl team, which beat Oklahoma State, the 05 Big Ten Conference Co-Champ team, which went on to defeat Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl, and then the following year he helped lead the Ohio State Buckeyes to a 2006 outright Big Ten Championship following an undefeated regular season where they were ranked number one in America the entire regular season. The Buckeyes that year played against three number two teams going two and one. They went on to play Florida in the 2006 BCS National Championship team. In uh, 2006, TJ was a consensus first team all Big Ten offense lineman, Associated Press second team All-American, and Rivals.com All-American. In 2006, he helped create a strong pocket for the Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback Troy Smith. Uh, TJ, again, knows a few things about the rivalry. He went 3-0 as a starter for the Ohio State Buckeyes at guard against the team up north and defeated Michigan in the game of the century where it was the only time in the history of the rivalry, which I still can't fathom that because of how important that rivalry is, where both teams were ranked number one and two in the nation, respectively, when they met on November 19, 2006. And, uh, I gotta add this, you can have this in your bio, but uh, HBO has a great uh, documentary on the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. Uh, it's about an hour long, about 55 minutes long, uh, and it covers from Fielding Ghost all the way to that game, and that was the year it came out. And uh, if you watch it right at the end when they uh, highlight the 06 game, there's a great cameo uh, of TJ and his mom at the end uh, on the field after they won. Uh, and I can tell there's a lot of passion uh, for that game and that. Um, the only other thing I'll mention, his dad was a Michigan man. So I'm sure there was some interesting conversations uh, in that household. But uh, without uh, 
Any further ado, it's a great honor to welcome Mr. T.J. Donahue. How's everybody doing? Good. For rivalry week, that didn't sound too good, did it? How's everybody doing? <laughs> One more time, please. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, here for me, <laughs> Hey, I know that this is the father-son steak fry, but you, you mentioned Zach, and thank you again for the introduction. Uh, the moms out there. My mom, she used to get so mad at me. She said, Every time Todd Porter comes over to talk to you, he just wants to talk about you and your dad. I don't think anybody knows that you have a mother. And I said, you know, Mom, I said, you're going to get your moment, your 15 minutes in the sun here shortly. I said, when, you know, when, when, when the game of the century ended and the cameras came up and, you know, she's hugging me and she's, she's in part of the documentary, I said, Mom, finally get you on camera, finally have the spotlight on you, and all you're doing is just crying. I can't believe you won! So, hey, shout out to all you moms out there. Let's give a round of applause to moms out there. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that I, I was fortunate enough with my dad to be able to learn a lot about the game of football, more than most offensive linemen or more than most football players out there. I have a dad who was, who was a Super Bowl champion, snapped the ball to Joe Montana, you know, was an All-American for Bush and I grew up in Michigan. But without my mom in my corner growing up, I mean, she was the one that took care of me. She was the one after I tried to tackle this guy inside Robert Fife Stadium after he kicked our butts 28 to 3 in 2002. And as I'm attempting to tackle him, I broke my finger. You know, the person was in the morning that took me to stack care and get me taken care of it was my mom. Whenever I was banged up, the first person that was there was my mom. She was always there for me. So again, one more time, round of applause for all the moms out there. Thank you for coming out. Todd, Todd uh, Porter did tell me one time, he said, uh, this is my uh, Stark County High School Football Hall of Fame induction speech back in 2014. He emceed it and he said, after I got done speaking, that's why we don't do offensive line and microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so I get along, a little long winded sometimes, but I'll try and give you guys a couple of nice little stories here. Uh, maybe some that relate to you, some if you guys can take this away. Rivalry Week, Hoover on, uh, on Friday night. I hope it works for you. First of all, I just want to say again, thank you to the Jackson football team, Coach Roar, how about the horsemen? How about all those guys do? Dan Michael, the horsemen, the Jackson horsemen, these guys get you ready. The sideliners, they take care of you guys. How about a round of applause for them? I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one of my, my great buddies who's no longer with us, Mike Byam. Um, I know uh, uh, Phil Byam just recently passed, but those guys were a big part of this organization and they loved this program with all of their heart. So um, we're we'll always thinking about those guys in the back of my heart. Um, you know, my sister Lauren, she goes to school here. A lot of you guys are in class with, with my sister Lauren Downey. Um, it's, uh, it's special for me to be able to come back and talk um, to guys that are inside of the Federal League, guys that I competed against, school, school that I competed against. Uh, it, it holds a special place in my heart. You know, the, the staff, the support, the trainers, the, the people that get you guys ready. It's a special thing that you're going through right now. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can think back fondly of some memories, and, and Zach even brought one up. Uh, you know, Coach Roar and I, we go way back, man. You know, competed against each other, and, and uh, somebody just happened to bring up an unfortunate memory from the one time we got about this close to beating the Jackson Polar Bears over at Boston Stadium back in 2000, 2001. Uh, we had, uh, we had come into the game, we were riding pretty high, and I'll tell you guys this, I mean, the, the Federal League back then, Jay, I don't even agree on this, 2000, 2001, I think the Federal League was as strong as it had ever been in its history. I think we had five or six teams qualified for the playoffs, but uh, that game at Foster Stadium, we uh, believe you guys lined up for me for a 38, 40-yard field goal attempt, and so my partner and I in, there, uh, in the trenches, Evan Moxie, who's a year older than me, and, he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. He said, when they go to snap the ball back, he goes, I'm going to fake the center out, I'll pull him, give you a little alley, go through there and block that thing, right? All right, cool. I'm a, I'm a listener, I can do that. Well, 
Uh, apparently, you guys reviewed the game tape, but Evan didn't do that because as I went through and get my hands on the ball, we block it. I'm thinking, okay, we just beat the polar bears. Flags come out. Evan must have rolled this guy about five yards into the backfield, and all the officials are, ah, oh, it's, it's a penalty, you know, they're going to have to line up and re-kick. Well, they re-kicked the new guy. So I ended up, uh, I ended up 0 for 3 against the polar bears in my career with one of them. So it was uh, not a lot of memories in the outcome, but I know I, I can tell you, um, from a competition standpoint, I've said this about my guy over here to the right, without a doubt, the toughest competitor I ever went against in my high school days. I mean, uh, the heart, if you, if you could put the heart of 32 into all of your players, you have one hell of a ball team. So I know that you guys, uh, I know that you players, I, I can see it as I call a lot of your games on 99.7, um, and, and even my days at Q92, I can see that, that he is rubbing off on you guys in the right way. You know, we had to stick together. We, uh, we ended up playing in the All-Star games, and we played in the North-South game down there. It was actually, uh, it was held at Grange Stadium, at Crew Stadium, um, but we were housed and dormed over at Ottermine College. And I remember the first day, I don't know if you remember this, man, walking out to practice. You, know, you and I were kind of side by side. I said, all right, man, we're the Stark County guys, man. We got to stick together. And Swift doesn't count. He's from Orville. So we're, we're going to keep Justin Swift over there. I was like, Jay, you and I, we got to stick together, man. So we, uh, we had fun in those games. Went over there in Pennsylvania, the big 33 game. I kind of joked as Zach was talking about that. I mean, they absolutely kicked our ass. Uh, the, the quarterback, Tyler Palco, who went to Pittsburgh. Um, their, their wide receiver, Steve Breston, who went to Michigan, unfortunately. I got paid that for you, man. So was, for the 224 yards, I think he caught receiving that day over Hershey. We got some payback on him uh, when he was up there in Ann Arbor. It was fortunate for both of us, Jack Rose and Phil Morrow were our coaches in that ball game. That, that was pretty special. Um, and, and shout out to Phil Morrow. I know how much he meant to this program. I know how much he still means to this program. And 200 wins. Just saw that, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago, 200 wins from Phil Morrow out there coaching for the Marlington Dukes now. So a big shout out to, to Phil. And, and, you know, for me, I've always been a fan of the game. And one thing that I've constantly tried to promote around this area for, for some of our local colleges, whether it's a D1 school, whether it's been my time covering Mount Union, whether it's, you know, covering the Walsh Cavaliers, whether it's the Akron Zips. One of the things I, I, I always loved watching or, or doing was catching up with the guys that I competed against. And as we all kind of spread across the map, uh, doing our own thing within our individual teams, I was so proud of, uh, of Jay and his teammates and what they did for the Akron Zips. Winning them their only MAC championship ever, was it the only one ever that was 05, right? You know, some guys that I competed against, like Andy Allman and Mike Donaldson and and Jay and Reggie Corner, to see those guys putting their Northeast Ohio footprint on that school. If any of those coaches are out there listening now, I put, I will put Stark County and Northeast Ohio football up against anybody in the country. I know they think they have a lot going on down in California, out in California, down in Texas, down in Florida, you know, Pennsylvania thinks that they're that, that they've got it going on. But what we have right here in our backyard is as strong of football that you will find anywhere in the country. So be proud of it. Be proud of what you guys are doing. And, and these coaches, I hope they start to understand that they need to keep you guys on their rosters. They need to start looking at you guys out here and recruiting you guys to come and play for them because now that becomes your home team. You know, when, when, when I mentioned about how strong the Federal League was back when I played in it, I mean, Jackson qualified, Lake qualified, we did a Glenno, Perry, Hoover, and, and Zach even threw out the stats there. I, I kind of got lucky because I'm going to be calling you guys on Friday night. We'll be out there on the, on the iHeartRadio app, 99.7, broadcasting you guys live. We've had a chance to cover a couple of your games so far this year. But, um, you know, the, uh, the, the to see, you know, that you guys, this is the 92nd meeting. That there's only three years that this game hasn't been played. Two of those times was inside the playoffs, and that was when Jay was playing. That was our junior year. 
It was so strong. It's something that you guys need to be proud of. This, the, the, the Federal League is strong. You guys need to make it stronger. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we get ready to talk about playoffs. Because that's where you guys really will make your impact when it comes to the league and start counting. The eyes are always going to be upon you throughout the regular season. Be a little bit bigger in week 10, playing your rival. But when you get into the playoffs, that's where you make your mark. But back then, they only took 18 to the playoffs. I know they, they only qualify almost everybody now, the 16. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter who you play. Hell, I want to have the best team round one. Let's hold court and handle business right now. No reason to face them three, four weeks down the road. You know, let's play the best team right now and find out what we're all about. You know, when I was down at Ohio State, we kind, of, we kind of embodied that philosophy. Todd will probably tell you. Every time he was looking for a good interview, he knew where to come. Come over there between me and my, uh, my parry buddy, Kirk Barton. I think he stopped getting interviews from quarterbacks after day one. He said, I'm going to go between the right guard and the right tackle because these guys have no filter with what comes out of their mouths. But we were a proud group. You know, and, and, and I'll talk about some of you offensive linemen out there, but as, as guys that play maybe not the most glamorous position, we've got to be proud. We're the biggest group on the field. We've got to be leaders. And that was one thing that, that we kind of, that was our, that was our rallying cry, our offensive line, we want to be the leaders of the team. But we were fortunate enough, and, and talking to Coach B over here earlier, man, so cool that, uh, you know, he was, he was under the same guys that I was. He had Coach Tress and Coach Jim Bowman, and we were telling some stories about those guys and, and how, how they impacted you. Coach Tress was known for impacting you off the field, teaching the life lessons, my offensive line coach. He would just tell us how to beat people's asses. That was great, learning those things. But the, the, the big things that I carried away when I was down at Ohio State were those big catch words. I'll throw a couple out here to you. Maybe we can relate it to a couple of you players out there. The first one's handling adversity. The game of football, and I believe I heard you come up over here and talk about wins and losses, right? It's not all about winning, it's not all about winning. There's more to the game than just wins and losses. I will always tell people about a shadow of doubt. I learned more about myself in my losses and failures than I did in any victory. Handling adversity comes in so many different forms. You've got the season, right? You guys have had a roller coaster of the season, right? I was there for the green game. Tough way, it was a tough way to lose. I'd rather get beat. Unfortunately, Zach brought up that Florida game my senior year. Uh, we get all the way to the national championship and we lost 41 to 14. I would rather lose 41 to 14 any day of the week than by one or two points. And I remember that feeling of losing to the Texas Longhorns in week two of 2005 in the horseshoe. Had them beat. We had them beat. And we knew that the winner of that game was going to go on to play for the national championship. We lost. They won. They beat USC and Rose Bowl and they were national champions. That was a tough goal to swallow. I still think about that stuff all the time. I'm up here talking to you about it now, so it's still fresh in my mind. But I, when, when, when you look at losing games like that, well, you guys lost the green game. Come back and you get a win. Have another tough one? Get back on the winning track. That's what it's all about. Handling adversity. It'll face you during your season. It'll face you as a team. Losing a key player. It'll face you as an individual. Well, shout out to man now, uh, Ben Lozano. Everybody's, uh, I, I know he's been a leader of this group. I know he's faced adversity, right? Stand up, man, where you at? Here you go, man. Handle adversity, man. You're doing it right now. I'll give you a little bit of a side note here. This helps you out at all, man. Going into my junior year, I had just come off of winning the starting job at offensive guard about halfway through my sophomore year. Um, Probably should have been starting the entire season, but you know sometimes you gotta you gotta figure some things out the hard way. 
You gotta learn how to play ball the right way. You gotta learn how to take orders sometimes. You know, you can't always give them. Sometimes you gotta learn how to take them. Um, we go in, I, I won the starting job. We beat Michigan. We go on, we win the Alamo Bowl. We beat Les Miles in Oklahoma State. Then we go into spring ball. You know, I'm flying high, man. Starting off in cigar for the Ohio State Buckeyes, April 24th. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It's not supposed to be raining and snowing on April 24th, right? It does in Ohio. We're inside of a horseshoe playing our spring game. And about halfway through the third quarter, I blow my knee out. And I'm starting off in cigar for the Ohio State Buckeyes, getting ready. Just want to get out of spring ball, get into summer conditioning. Get ready for a big junior season. And I blow my knee out in the final practice, the final game situation of spring. Now I'm facing three months of rehab. All I can do is lift up a body. Can't do anything, can't do any cutting, can't do any running. And we all know as athletes, it's the most important thing. And I'll tell, tell a lot of you guys out there, I know you love the weight room, right? You gotta be strong, gotta be physical. There is no substitute for a well-conditioned athlete. Be prepared to go both ways. Work your cardio, work your speed. The strength will come with whatever you do. Being able to go four quarters, that's what it's all about. And when I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to train in those fields, it set me back. But up top here, Jack Rose used to tell us, said you got that, he, what he called the little green man in the back of your head. He talks to you a lot. And you have to learn how to silence him. I think I probably started conditioning and running full speed about two weeks before training camp, which is not nearly enough when you're competing at the Division I level in college football. They told me not to run the full conditioning test, which was, we did gassers, which was across the field of that, and back, 20 of them at the time. He said, TJ, just do 10, shut it down. You've only been cutting for a week. He said, no, my expectations are to be the best. I did all 20, made my times. But the first thing that went through my mind, man, when I got out there with that first contact, is this thing, is this thing just going to go again? Is it just going to, is, is your knee just going to give out? You know, maybe you haven't done everything you could. Maybe it's pushing it a little bit too quick. You go out there and you block that noise out of your head. You play 100 miles an hour, and you get after it, and you don't think about anything else other than your job and playing the game of football. Injuries happen in this game. Just this past summer, I was able to go up to Huron and play in a golf outing for a guy. Same situation, not as, not, I, I can sit here and say that it was bad for me in a spring game to blow my knee out. I played with a guy by the name of Tyson Gentry who went to St. Dusty Perkins High School. And we were doing our final scrimmage in spring ball in 2005. Tyson got in there at the end of the scrimmage. He's playing wide receiver. He was a punter for us. He's getting a couple reps. First time he's out there, he went across the middle of the field. And he hasn't walked since. He's been in a wheelchair since that day. And, and those are the things, when we strap up a helmet and we go out there on the field, when you're out between those white lines, man, it is real. You guys all know that. I used to tell my teammates all the time, Coach Trestle used to get mad. He said, you know, we win with class around here. Well, I said, Coach, it's real on the field. I said, when that guy was trying to choke my running back out in Champaign, Illinois, I said, class is out the window, and I'm on attack mode now. You've got to be able to control all the noise, not, out, not just necessarily around you, but inside your own heads. This game, I told you, you throw the strength stuff out. Everybody's strong. This game is 10% physical, 90% mental. It's all between your ears. Handling adversity was one of those big words that always kind of stuck with me. We know it's going to face us eventually. It's not going to just face you in football. It's going to face you in the classroom. Parents. We pay bills now, right? You know, Hale University is going to hit you in the mouth one day or another, you know? It's just part of life. And this game teaches us so much about life and being able to handle things the right way, use it to your advantage. One of the other big words, leadership. Leadership is huge. You've got to have leaders on your football team. 
I've been fortunate enough to become great friends with, with Tim Arnold and Colt Arnold and want to give a special shout out. I, you know, one of the things we do at, uh, at Stark Media, you know, we can't do it without great community partners. I'm going to give a shout out to my guy, Chris McCready's, man. He got behind us from day one with FinallyHeroOhio.com and everything that he does. Salute to you, my man. Thank you for always believing in us and getting behind us. But you've got to have leaders. Somebody's got to step to the forefront as a leader of this group. Accountability, trust. These coaches aren't going to put you out there if they can't trust you. You've got to be able to show your coaches that you can handle any situation. You know, I used to think, you know, I was being punished not being put out there as a sophomore now at Ohio State, but Coach Trussell couldn't fully trust me at that point. He needed to be able to trust that when I got out there and lined up at offensive guard, and a linebacker walked up into the A gap, and we've got to make a play check, and we've got to do something all within a 25 second play clock. Cadence, checks, audibles, a guy that's probably 6'3, 240 pounds, faster than you, more athletic than you, and you're going to be able to get the job done. When you've got the Heisman Trophy winner right behind you, you've got to be able to protect that guy. Your coach has got to be able to trust that you can get that done. I, I, I loved seeing, uh, I was out there for you guys' game against McKinley. And uh, I, I love the way that Jay works with his, his linebackers and his defense. And where's more of that? More of a stand up. There you are. I see, I see Coach Ward, he grabbed you. And uh, Coach Ward's got a way of getting his message across, right? Got a way, what does he say? Uh, understood? All right? I heard him saying that to you, man. Coach has got to be able to trust you guys that you understood the message that you're going to get it done. And let me tell you the one final word that wraps that up. And this is what I've prided my entire career on. Attitude. If you do not have the right attitude, it's not the game for you. You have to have an attitude that you're going to go out there and physically dominate the player across from you. Got 11 different battles going on, 11 different individual battles that you've got to impose your will upon the guy across from you. I was fortunate after uh, my senior year, was long, I was there with the Arizona Cardinals long enough to maybe get the, the shorts and the polo shirt, take the picture and get a check, and that was the end of my NFL career. But I had time there to spend with Russ Grimm, who was part of the legendary Redskins Hogs. He's in the Hall of Fame right down the street here. He's a gold jacket. And I'll never forget him saying, there's nothing more satisfying than taking a person from point A to point B against their will. Offensive, defensive linemen, you got to love that. That's got to get you excited in the morning. When you get out of bed and you think about the opportunity that lays ahead of you on Friday night, I mean, this, I, I got a chance to see the Hoover Vikings last week. We called their game against Green. You've got to be excited to be able to line up against these guys. Not just because it's your rival. It's just, this game does not last forever. I never thought that my last snap was going to be in a training camp with the Arizona Cardinals. I thought, you know, hey, my dad did it for six, seven years. I'm going to do the same thing. Never thought that it would be my last snap. And I look back on it and you miss it. Understand that these snaps that you're about to get Friday night, they're limited. They're fading. If you do not take advantage, full advantage of every one of those snaps, leaving nothing in the tank. Everything's got to come out. Firing all pistons. Imposing your will against your opponent. I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, that opportunity to do that, if it doesn't get you excited, seniors, this is your last trip. Where's the seniors at? Here? Stand up, seniors. Goes by quick, doesn't huh? it? Goes by real quick. It's your last time in the lineup against the Vikings. Enjoy it. Respect it. Get after it. Play between the whistles. 
but be a mad dog by the time that ball is snapped. And that's with your attitude. Your attitude and how you carry yourself, how you handle yourself out there on the field, it's reflected. Trust me, we all know the eye in the sky, it doesn't lie, right? Coaches film everything, you see everything, you self-scout yourself. You know what you put out there on videotape. Make sure that when you go back, that was the one thing I always, I, I would get done playing a game and I couldn't wait to go back and watch the tape of it. Because I wanted to make sure and just see, is there anything else I could have done better? Is there something I could have given more? And I always wanted to make sure when I turned that tape on that I saw a guy that left nothing in the tank. There was nothing in reserve. It was laid all out on the field. And by the time triple zeros hit in the fourth or overtime, however it may be, the entire product was left out there on the field for everybody to see. And you want to make sure that when that game's over, your opponent, the player across from you, they respect you because of what you did and how you carried yourself and how you handled yourself. The playoffs are going to be special for you guys, right? We've got one more to handle here, but make your mark. It's starting to get fun now, right? Rivalry week, the Vikings, playoffs on the backside of that. Cherish these memories. I think back on it like it was yesterday. Unfortunately, his old teammate there with the Akron Zips, Mike Donaldson, we played them now, Mansfield Senior down in Arlington Field my junior year. And we, uh, we came out a little bit too slow in the first half. Fought like hell in the second half. It was a mud pit down there in our little field. We didn't come away with a victory in that game. One of his old buddies, one of his old comrades there with the Zips, Mike Donaldson, was all about 6'8", 350 pounds. And we ended up getting beat by Mansfield Senior. That was the only game I ever competed in the playoffs in Ohio High School football. And I wish every day that we would have been able to win that game and advance to the next round. It was the first time the Leno Bowen Eagles had been to the playoffs in 15 years. That was special, but it was short-lived. Take that message to heart. I'm 38 years old here, Stan, telling you right now what I wouldn't give to have made the second round of the playoffs. Play with all your heart. Play with all your passion. Be fearless. You step out there between those white lines, Mom, Dad, they're not going to protect you. Coach is going to put you in the best possible position he can. And he's not going to protect you. It's up to you. How are you going to handle yourself? Right? Davide, holding on to that ball a little bit harder. Handing it to the official. Leaving no doubt. Right? Where's my guys at? Justin Pierce. Italian. Colt. Bowser. Connor. Where's my five line now, man? Stand up. Uh, put number 15 in there. Where's 15? He can stand up too. He's, he's, a, he's a good blocker. <laughs> hey guys. It's uh the first person ever come up here and pull out the entire offensive line. Most people want to talk about quarterbacks and running backs and receivers, but you guys are the motor, you guys are the engine. <clears throat> Right? Get after it. Don't be afraid to communicate. Don't be afraid to be loud. Get after it when you take the field this Friday night. Leave nothing behind. I'll give you one final story before I wrap it up. And this kind of ties in the dads and the sons, what this tradition here is all about. I mentioned to you that I was fortunate enough to have a dad who was a captain All-American at the University of Michigan. My junior year, you know, I mentioned to you that I had come off of blowing my knee out in the spring game, got back into training camp, passed my conditioning test, had my starting spot, a little fearful in the back of my mind that maybe it wasn't strong enough, but after that first play, that went out of the back of the, the, the rear view. That year, my junior year, fortunately, as I mentioned again, we lost to Texas in week two, but I logged more minutes on Ohio State's offense than any other player on the team. And when we went up to Ann Arbor in 2005, we had to beat them to get a piece of the Big Ten title. 
We had lost to Penn State. Penn State had beaten Michigan. It was all on the table there for us to take. And I went out there, and I knew that this was my moment to show everybody who knew my father, and knew what he had done, all of his boys, they were all back in their Michigan Letterman jackets. They did their tunnel of pride. I know some of you dads out there probably remember when John Hicks ran through there and ripped it down as he was coming down. All those guys in the Michigan Letterman jackets were over on the Michigan side, getting ready to put their banner up. And my dad was over on my sideline. He had his Michigan jacket on, but he had my Ohio State jersey on under the And I'll never forget, we come out there for the national anthem. Now, I had a hell of a job at home. I got Lamar Woodley, who's maybe one of the best defensive ends to ever play the game. I got Gabe Watson, who's a first team All-American in defensive tackle. I got David Harris, a linebacker, who started 10 years for the New York Jets. And I'm thinking, all right, it's out there for me for the taking. I'll never forget waking up that morning in Ypsilanti, Michigan, at our hotel. The first guy I saw when I got off the elevator was Luke Fickle. Him and I locked eyes, and I knew at that moment I was going to play the greatest game that I ever lined up and played. Now, a little foreshadowing, I ended up getting player of the game, offensive lineman of the game. I did play my best game ever. We won the game on a uh, final two minute drive. Most of you remember this all that game, Troy Smith. Drove us 88 yards down the field behind the offensive line. Make sure you mention that. Completed the pass to Congressman Gonzalez and got us inside the five yard line and we finished it off with none other than a power play, full and left, and Antonio Pickett found his way to the end zone first to win the game 25-21. But the most special moment to me at that day was when we came out there for the national anthem. My dad's standing over there, and all of his boys are standing over there. And he was next to his son, and I'll never forget, singing the national anthem. Here comes the stealth bomber flying over the big house. And I looked down at my dad. And there was only one time in my life before that night that I'd seen him cry. That's when he had to put down his golden retriever. But his eyes are just sobbing. He's crying. I'm thinking, Dad, you need to get your shit together. You don't have to go out there and rock the bar. What if we gave Boston to Dave Harris? So to have my dad there with me in that moment, it was so special. You guys out here right now, with your dads here with you, with your moms here with you, it's a special moment. Don't ever forget this night. Don't ever forget the work that you put in to get to this point. And let it all hang out on Friday night. I'm pulling for you guys. Go get them.